If you're trying to conceive and you've been diagnosed with fibroids or you suspect that you may have a fibroid, you probably have some questions about how this would affect your pregnancy or your fertility. I'm here to give you all the information that you need. So a fibroid is a smooth muscle tumor that grows in the uterus. They're most often benign or not cancerous growth. So I have a model here which shows a uterus here, and you can see the fallopian tubes and the ovaries are kind of underneath. And there are a couple of fibroids that are here in different locations. When it comes to fertility, the fibroids that we focus on the most are ones called submucosal, which means that they're inside. So this white structure here is what a submucosal fibroid looks like. And even if this is very small, imagine that an embryo is microscopic. So if an embryo is trying to find a healthy place to implant here, a fibroid that's really in the middle of the cavity can limit that. Or if an embryo implants too close to a submucosal fibroid, it might start a pregnancy and then may not be able to continue and can miscarry early. So submucosal fibroids, even if they're smaller, are the ones that we really say should be removed and so that they don't impact your fertility. There can also be intramural fibroids, which means within the wall. And you can see this one here kind of goes across the whole wall of the uterus and also makes a little bump on the outside. So on the outside of the uterus, they're called subserosal. Even if a fibroid is subserosal on the outside, if it gets too large, that can still affect how the rest of the uterus functions. And even if the whole cavity is smooth, no submucosal fibroids, if you have very large subserosal fibroids, we may still recommend or talk about myomectomy to remove those before you try to get pregnant. In general, about 70% of women will be diagnosed with fibroids at some point during their reproductive lifetime. For black women, it's up to 80%. So we do have a higher incidence of fibroids in the black community. So depending on the size and location of the fibroids, you may have heavier menstrual cycles, prolonged bleeding. Another sign of heavy bleeding is if you're passing clots when you bleed, so that may be an indication. Sometimes you can have bleeding outside of your expected time of having a menstrual cycle, so irregular pattern to your bleeding um, can be another factor. Or even sometimes pain with intercourse, or if you have fibroids that press on other structures in your pelvis, like your bladder, you might have to urinate more often. Or if your fibroids press on your rectum or your intestine, you may have constipation or kind of bowel symptoms related to that. You should start with your OBGYN. And you know, we always encourage all women to have an annual exam. So this is a perfect opportunity, whether you're having concerns, fertility concerns, if you're just doing your routine maintenance, to check in once a year. That gives you the opportunity to have your bimanual exam and just to talk with your GYN. If you're having fibroid issues or symptoms and you're having trouble getting pregnant, then yes, definitely see a fertility specialist and we can evaluate the uterus and make our re recommendations with fertility preservation in mind for how the fibroids should be managed. Having a fibroid doesn't always mean that you're gonna have infertility or trouble getting pregnant. We definitely do not just jump on every fibroid that we see. It really has to be the size and the location that would be more of a concern. So again, if they're subserosal inside the cavity, that may be an issue for fertility. If they're very large, that might also be a factor, but it's not an absolute. you have a submucosal fibroid, those are the fibroids that are inside the cavity. And if it's completely within the cavity, that can be re removed through a procedure called a hysteroscopy. So hist means uterus and scope means camera. So for a hysteroscopy, we put you under anesthesia, pass a camera through the cervix and just look inside the cavity, see the fibroid, use an instrument to just remove the fibroid while we're looking at it. That's an outpatient procedure, may take 30 minutes or so to complete that. You go home the same day and you can start trying to get pregnant a month after that. If you have subserosal or intramural fibroids, you cannot really go through the cervix and safely shave those out without potentially perforating or going too deep into the uterus. So if the fibroids are on the outside, that would require an abdominal approach. And so for abdominal myomectomy, you have to cut across the abdomen, cut over the surface where every fibroid is, remove them on the exterior and sew up all those places on the uterus. If you have an abdominal myomectomy because it's more invasive and requires more incisions on the uterus, you have to wait longer after that type of myomectomy. We typically recommend that you wait at least three to six months after that type of myomectomy so that those scars and cuts on the uterus have time to heal. 
yes, you should definitely check in with a fertility specialist beforehand. And what we recommend is that you have just kind of a baseline assessment before you have a myomectomy. Depending on the type of myomectomy, you can have an outpatient myomectomy where you're just kind of going through the vagina and removing a small fiber from inside. And that's a less invasive procedure and there's less downtime and risk. If you have an abdominal myomectomy, that's a major surgery to cut into your abdomen and remove fibroids that way. And definitely before you go into anesthesia or have a major procedure, we should know basic things like, do you have normal egg supply? If you have a partner, does your partner have normal sperm? If all that testing is favorable, we say, yes, you can go right ahead and have your myomectomy. And then afterwards, we can look at your uterus. We can do an HSG and make sure there's no scar tissue that's affected your tubes. And if so, we have a good foundation for where we are. But if you come in and we do testing and the egg reserve is already kind of borderline or there may be some factors already, then we may talk about should you freeze your eggs first and then you can take your time to have your surgery and recover and know that you have healthy embryos waiting for you afterwards versus finding out you know where you stand after you've already had a major surgery. If you have fibroids, the first thing is to understand that many women have fibroids. It's very common for us to have them, and it's really just the ones that are larger in a bad location or inside the uterus that may affect your chance of getting pregnant. Many women get pregnant with small fibroids in place. Many women who have a myomectomy and make their uterus back to normal have successful pregnancies after that. Most important is to really just be an advocate for yourself and for your own health. Don't downplay, don't ignore things. You know your body. If you know something's not right, just check in with your GYN. If you're already having fertility concerns, you can definitely see a fertility specialist. And we can do the full assessment, not just of your uterus and your fibroids, but of your ovaries, your partner, if there's a partner present. And make sure that you're keeping your fertility in mind as well as managing the fibroids at the same time.